Ancestry.com has a ton of hints and clues that are all over their platform. And well, I'm sure you know about some of them, but I bet I have a few that you don't know about or maybe just have overlooked. Hey, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of these videos. And well, hey, Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the description box below this video. Now there is a handout for the information access level channel members. Make sure you're hooked up there or you can find them at genealogytv.org. I have 20 hints and clues for you uh, that you can see on Ancestry.com. So let's jump over to the computer and check it out. All right, number one, the very first thing is the hints right here. You mo most likely are using these hints more than anything else, but you should know that these hints are providing hints not only from member trees, but they're also providing hints about Thomas Pierce and or his family. So make sure you're scrolling through all of the hints and discovering what's available for your ancestor right from the ancestor's profile. Okay, the second one is kind of a no-brainer as well. These are the leafy hints that you see right on the family tree. You can kind of get an idea of how many there are. And then when you click through to this, it's going to take you to the same page of the hints page that you would see on the profile. All right, so number three is through lines right from the family tree. You can see this little icon right here gives you a hint that there is a through lines for that. And when you click on that, then you cl can click right through to the through lines and see the through lines specific to people who descend from Samuel Clark. Once you are here, you can see that there are several ancestors that you don't have in your tree. They are marked by the dashed lines and you can see other cousin matches uh, listed here. So here is an opportunity to dig into their trees and to see what they have. And you can see by clicking through here, you can see exactly how they descend from uh, your fifth great grandfather. In this case, my fifth great grandfather, Samuel Clark. So here we are in the profile for Samuel Clark. And if we do a search directly from his profile, we're going to get list of results specific to Samuel Clark based on the information that I had in the profile. So here, this gives us record hints, right? As we scroll down, we can see a lot of record hints. This box up here is showing us what we already have. We already have six records in our tree. So this gives us an opportunity to then search more records. Again, you're probably familiar with this, but we're going to kind of continue to dig a little deeper. So number five is after we have searched from, in this case, Samuel Clark's profile page, and we get this, and this is the same, same page I was showing you in, in the previous section. So here, right from the top, we have member trees and right here we have a tree that we might want to dig into it's being delivered to the top which most likely ancestry thinks is a very strong possibility that this is the same samuel clark that is in my tree and if we take notice it's showing over here that this birth information is the same as the year that i have the death information is the same year that I have, and it looks like this Hampton family tree has more information than I do. So we might want to take a look at that. Plus, we <laughs> might want to take a look at this button here, browse more hints like this. This, just clicking on this, no matter where you are in, in the search functions, is going to give you additional records similar to this one. In this case, it would deliver more member trees. Now here's a quick tip. While you're in the search uh, page, if you scroll down and you see something that looks like this, we've got 71,000 results. 
that is a clue to you that you need to filter stuff down. So if you have a specific research question in mind and you are, let's say, going after a marriage record, then you probably need to filter it down to birth, marriage, and death. And then now we're down to 26,000 record sets. So let's filter that down to marriage and divorce. Now we're down to 5,400. You can keep fiddling with this and filtering down a uh, specific, let's say, let's see, we know he's in North Carolina, so let's filter down to uh, North America. Then we filter down to USA. Then we filter down to North Carolina. And now we've got it down to 45 results. This is a little bit more manageable. Okay, number eight right here from the same page we have been working on. Remember that this information, all of this, this whole search box came from Samuel Clark's profile page. And when we clicked on just this search button up here, not, not this search button, but this search button, we got this results and there's a difference. So we'll talk more about that here in a moment. But what I wanted to point out here is that when we come to this page, by default, Ancestry leaves smart filtering turned on. Now, smart filtering basically says, with smart filtering turned on, it's not going to deliver any more hints. That's this list down here. It's not gonna uh, deliver any more hints from these record sets because these are the record sets that I already have in my tree. Well, that can be good and bad because if you are digging deeper and you are trying to find more information, then what if, in my case, Samuel Clark here, what if he appears in a record set more than once? But we've already imported one record into this profile. For example, we've got, we, we've actually got the same record set twice here, but it's for two different people, okay? And then we've got a couple other record sets. Well, he was a Quaker. And in the Quaker meeting records, it was very common, like very common, that ancestors appear many times in the Quaker meeting records because it was the business of the church. And the church, the elders were probably uh, assigning tasks Hey Samuel, go check on uh, this couple who want to get married. You need to go talk to the groom and make sure that, you know, everything is good to go. So that was recorded in the meeting records. And then maybe another time they were working on the church and they needed a group of people to work together. And Samuel Clark again was called on to do that. Well, that's another entry into the Quaker meeting records. So Quakers were commonly found in meeting records multiple times. So with smart filtering turned on, I'm not gonna get any more delivery of hints for these Quaker meeting records. It's gonna give me everything else, okay? So what we can do is we turn that smart filtering off, turn the smart filtering off and run the search again. And hopefully we get some more potential meeting records from this record set. It will also deliver any others coming from any other record set that I have already in the profile. So that's an important one to know is to pay attention to smart filtering. Okay, so number nine is no matter if you've searched from here or if you searched from the search box and drop down the card catalog or whatever, when you get your results, number nine is to, to review the categories. So we've got this list of records here, but if we click over to categories, we can look at things in a different way. And this can be very helpful if you are, again, trying to look for maybe a marriage record or specifically a military record, this is wildly helpful because look, at the top of this list, we had 71,000 results, but by looking at it by category, we can narrow it down to a much smaller group and then we can narrow it from there. Now, this is an unfiltered list at the moment. This this is a, a search strictly from what Samuel Clark had in his profile. This is, this is really unfiltered. I haven't, I haven't filtered anything. So just by clicking on categories can be wildly helpful. Okay, number 10 is to see all results. So as you can see right here, we have sensor voter list 
and normally I would filter this down, but still you can click right here and get more census and voter list things that are in this category. See Ancestry is providing little hints all over the place. Records, categories, see all, you know, I mean, we have little hints popping up everywhere. Okay, number 11 is when you get to the point where you are looking at a record, and in this case, I've already saved this record to my Samuel Clark profile, but here is a record where it shows his spouse, Elizabeth Bennett, right? So before I go look at the record itself, I want to take a look at this. Look make a connection. Here's another clue. This is where you may find other people researching the same people that you are. And it is a great opportunity to go look at their trees, look at the sources that they have, and maybe collaborate. Okay, number 12 is from the home page. Now, everybody has a little bit different home page. I have an older version, so I can customize mine. However, most of you probably have this box here that has more hints for you. Basically, what this is showing you is recent activity from your tree. So these are things that are in my tree, but people have downloaded them or imported them into their own tree. And so when you drill into here, you can see who's working on the same lines. So drilling down, you can see that uh, this is a little story about uh, Jesse's property and it was added to my tree last month. And these other people have uh, pulled that in. Well, that's a clue right there that they may be working on the same lines and you might want to go look at their family trees, their records, and possibly collaborate with them. Okay, hint number 13 is to use these filters right here. If you click down and click on family events, this is actually, in my opinion, another way of hinting to you um, and helping you understand what's going on in your ancestor's lifetime as a family is being born or, you know, his wife dies. It just is a reminder in the timeline and it might help you have a better understanding of what's going on in his life in and around the time that these family events are happening. And tip number 14 is to do this, turn on the historical event. Now, I have found it to be difficult at times to, to find historical events in some of my ancestors' profiles, but in this case, uh, George Simmons here, this is listing the panic of 1907 but as we scroll on down and these are intermixed with uh his family events but here we've got the great lake storm of 1913 america enters world war one registering for the draft of world war one so there's several story little pop-ups here and here is a story scout hint this also gives you information about what was going on in and around the area the end of prohibition, all these things happening during his lifetime, which can really kind of help fill in some of the details of what was happening in your ancestor's lifetime by turning on historical insights and family events. All right, so tip number 15 is this. If you go to the hints tab, and here I have already reviewed all of the hints for him, and you can see that I have accepted six, and I've ignored eight, and I have one undecided. Well, my hint <laughs> for you now is to look at the ignored hints again, because perhaps it has been, I don't know, a couple of years since I researched this guy, and I may have acquired more information since I worked this line in the past and I'm now looking at it again and I can scroll down and see all of the hints that I have ignored. So when you ignore them, they don't go away. They're still here and any undecided hints are here. So take a look at the ignored hints and maybe search the member trees. There may be more member trees here than there were when I ignored them the first time. And so if you decide that this is in fact the, the right guy, you can don't ignore button and or review and accept it. So there you have it. Check out your ignored hints from time to time to make sure that you haven't got more information than you had before. Okay, hint number 16 is that when you are getting ready to look at a record, normally you might start over here and 
then this little button here shows you the source and you'll find it in various places but my big tip here is to look for the original source because sometimes these online views from microfilm or from other places are really hard to read and so if you can physically go and look at the actual record in this case the Church of English Parish Reg registers in London England who knows maybe I'll make it to the London uh, Metropolitan Archives one of these days and take a look at the actual record boy wouldn't that be cool but then you can also see things like faded handwriting marks that sort of thing so you always want to try and seek the original record so um, there is another hint that Ancestry is giving you is where the original data came from all right here's another hint or clue whatever you want to call it um, from the card catalog or anywhere when you are searching and in this case I just dropped down to the card catalog by the way this is my favorite way to search and then I drilled into this uh, record set here and that is what I'm looking at right here this hint is to look at the related data collections on the side here check it out so all of these here are also similar to this record set so if I'm searching for my ancestor in this record set I should also be like right click open in a new tab right click open in a new tab right and then I, all I have to do is work the tabs across the top when I finish uh, exhausting my search on each one of those record sets then I can close them out now depending on the time frame these might not apply because as you can see there's different years here but uh, you should always be paying attention to that related data collections okay hint number 18 is something you may not even know exists so when you're on the when you click on the DNA tab and you click uh, your DNA results this is the page that pops up one of the things that most people don't even realize is well they can drill into their all of their DNA matches by clicking the green button which I bet 90% of people do you can click on these faces each one of these faces you can click on and see exactly what your DNA connection is with them for example clicking in here I can see that Mary here is my fifth to eighth cousin so that in itself is its own little tip you can drill into the photographs so this tip is complements of through lines so if you click on the DNA tab and you click on through lines you're gonna to get to this view scrolling down beyond the ancestors that you already have you can get these potential ancestors so these are hints these are potential ancestors as you can see when I hover over them it gives more information but with the dashed line it means that these people are not in my tree and that they could be my fourth in this case fourth great-grandfather and fourth great-grandmother and when you hover over them they highlight how many DNA matches and the centimorgan range that you have so clicking here you can evaluate the DNA matches to see if in fact you believe that the records and such support the DNA connection okay we've made it to number 20 but stick around because I also have a bonus tip for you so number 20 is this if we drill into one of these potential ancestors that are shown in the through lines it takes you to the through line it shows you uh, the DNA connections which I'm not going to open up for privacy reasons it shows how many you know generations there are to this potential ancestor but it also shows you an evaluate button and so by clicking here you can get into the evaluation mode and in this case it's showing us a side panel you can also drill into each one of these but in this case it is showing you some member trees that I have blurred out for privacy reasons but you can evaluate the connections here and or any records that may be within their trees okay here's my bonus tip I'm I love this tip I have done a whole episode on this in the past from the ancestor profile if you click on tools and drop down to member connect uh, we're gonna talk briefly about member connect and how you collaborate with others but you can also get to it right here if you have this turned on and if you don't have this turned on you can hit tools and hit show research tools and that will give you all of these research tools right here so clicking on member connect you can then go over and see see the connections so here I have two connections I'm gonna collapse these make it easy so here I have two connections already and here are three suggested connections I'm gonna collapse these again just to make it easy to see 
And what you can do is then connect with them, click the connect button. And what that does is it basically puts it in your queue. It really doesn't connect with them technically, but what you can do by connecting with them, as I have done here, is it allows you a quick way to see any kind of new records that they may have imported, as well as being able to click through and actually connect with them, send them a message. Just keep your eyes open as you, uh, you know, cruise through the Ancestry platform because there are hints laying all over the place. All right, now, if you want the, I'm laughing because I can't get this closed right. All right, so <laughs> here we go. All right, you ready? All right. If you want the handout, make sure that you are joined at the information access level channel membership and make sure that you go to the community tab and open up the community tab. You can f go through the blog posts and download all of the handouts to your little heart's content. Or you can find them at genealogytv.org uh, where you can find all the handouts over there as well. All right. I hope that was helpful. Uh, you know what? There are more videos on the screen for you now for your binge watching pleasure. And I'm sorry for the Google vids, but that's just the way it is.